Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build guide and today I'm going to show you how to build a PC in the Thermaltake V270 TG ARGB. You'll find links to all the parts I've used in the description, so let's make a start by taking a detailed look at the case. To remove our temper glass side panel, we can simply pop it out from the top and lift up and away. And it's exactly the same process for removing the front panel. To remove our other side panel, we've got two captive thumb screws at the back we need to loosen. And once these have been loosened, we're able to pull the panel backwards and lift up and away. And on the back of the panel, we've got a magnetically attached dust filter. In terms of case rigidity, without the tempered glass panels installed, this is actually pretty good. Taking a look at our case's top I.O., we've got a power and reset button, a separate headphone and microphone jack, two USB Type-A ports and a single Type-C port. On the top of the case, we've got a magnetically attached dust filter, which can simply be lifted away. Our case is one and only pre-installed case fan. It's installed on the rear set to exhaust. This is a 140mm PWM ARGB fan. If you prefer, it is possible to mount a 120mm fan or up to a 120mm radiator. On the top of the case, you can mount up to three 120 or two 140mm fans or up to a 360mm radiator. Although you can mount 140mm fans at the top, there is no support for 280mm radiators. On the side of the case, it's up to two 120mm fans. There's no radiator support on the side. While on the bottom of the case, you can mount up to three 120mm fans. You can see we've got holes here for long radiator screws. And all you're going to simply do is set your 120mm fans onto place at the bottom. And in the case accessory box, you get these long radiator screws. And there is 12 of them, enough for mounting three fans at the bottom. They're going to go through your fans and screw into the bottom of the case. And you can see we've got these perforated panels on at the bottom, on the side and front of the case. And these should provide airflow for the fans you mount on your power supply shroud. You can see at the rear of the case we've got seven horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets and in terms of graphics card support, the maximum length supported is up to 420 millimeters. And you can see we've got a cutout at the bottom for bringing your GPU cables through. And on the bottom of the case we've got a magnetic attached dust filter over our power supplies intake. Moving into the rear of the case, and we can see we've got cutouts in lots of sensible places, although there's not a rubber grommet in sight. In terms of cable tie-down points, these look to be pretty good all the way around the motherboard tray. There's no Velcro cable straps, but we do get plenty of cable ties in the case accessory bag. And in terms of cable routing space, this looks to be good. It's nice to see that all our case cables are colour matched to the colour of the case, and our front panel connectors are organised into a single cable. In terms of drive mounting, we've got a dedicated 2.5 inch drive mounting bracket behind the motherboard. It's held on with a non captive thumb screw, and once the thumb screw has been removed, you're going to be able to simply remove the bracket and fix your drive to it. We've also got a hard drive cage down at the bottom of the case, and in the hard drive cage itself, you're going to be able to mount a 3.5 inch drive, and on top of the hard drive cage, you're going to be able to mount either a 3.5 or 2.5 inch drive. Now, this drive cage is movable and removable. You can see we've got additional slots here. So it is possible to move the drive cage further towards your power supply. To remove the drive cage, we're first going to have to remove the two thumb screws at the bottom, holding it in place. And then you're going to be able to pull the hard drive cage towards you and lift it up to remove from the case. The case is compatible with full-sized ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 280 millimeters with the drive cage installed all the way to the front. If you install it closer to the power supply, it's up to 250 millimeters. Although if you remove the hard drive cage like I've done, you get absolutely loads of space at the bottom for your power supply. We're now ready to start working on our motherboard room. We're going to install our CPU, our CPU killer, our M.2 SSD and our RAM before we put the motherboard into the case. To open the socket cover, we need to push this lever down and out to bring it all the way to the middle of the motherboard and then we can open our socket cover up. We can then carefully lower our CPU down into the socket, holding it by the edges. And once we're happy our CPU is sitting correctly in the socket, we can close the socket cover down again. Then all we need to do is close the lever. The black bit of plastic will pop off as we do and we'll put it in our motherboard box for safekeeping. Our M.2 SSD heatsink is held on with two screws. We can then insert our M.2 SSD into the socket, and you'll notice when we flatten it down, the same screw that holds our heatsink in place is going to hold our drive in place. If you're using the motherboard from new, there'll be some plastic protection in the back of the heatsink to remove, and we can then replace our heatsink. We're going to be installing our RAM in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU, so I'm going to open the clips on these slots. Then we can line our RAM up with a slot. And once we're happy it's lined up, it's just some firm pressure and it's going to clip into place. First step in installing our CPU cooler is to remove the stock clips. They're each held on with two screws. We've then got one of these standoffs to screw on to each corner. We've got a bracket to go on at the top and at the bottom. And you'll notice on these we've got a narrow pointing towards the CPU. And then we need to put a thumb screw onto each corner. 
and we can then add some thermal paste to the center of the CPU. If you're using the CPU color from new, there'll be some plastic protection on the cool plate you're gonna to need to remove. We've got a metal grill on the top of the CPU color we're gonna to need to remove. You're able to get your finger in at each side and just lift it off, it is magnetically attached. With it removed, you can see our fan and you can see the direction of airflow through the fan. So it's gonna be flowing this way. So we're gonna to want to have this side facing towards the front of the case and this side facing towards the rear. To allow us to screw our CPU cooler down, we are gonna to have to set this fan temporary up and out of the way. And then we're gonna be able to pull the fan upwards. And all we're gonna do is simply just rest it on top of the cooler. We can then lower our CPU cooler down, line that up with the bracket beneath. And deep can include this long screwdriver. We're just gonna be able to pass it down through the gap in the cooler and screw the cooler down to the bracket beneath. We're just going to want to tighten each side up in turn. We're then able to replace our fan. And importantly, we're going to want to make sure the direction of airflow is flowing from the front to the back. And then we can replace the mesh panel on the top. Then we can plug our fan cable into our CPU fan header and we can tuck the excess cable in onto the heatsink. We can then insert the motherboard into the case, line that up with the standoffs at the back. And then we'll secure it into place with nine of the motherboard screws from the case accessory box. Next thing to do is get our case cables plugged in. Our HD audio cable is going to go into this header down the bottom left of the motherboard. So we'll bring it through the cutout and get it plugged in. Two headers along, we've got an ARGB cable. So I'm going to bring the ARGB cable coming from our rear fan through and get it plugged in. Another two headers along, we've got a system fan header. So we'll bring the PWM cable coming from that rear fan through and plug it into place. Our front panel connectors are going to go into this header down the bottom right hand side of the motherboard. So we'll bring the cable through the cutout and we're going to plug it in with the front panel text facing up the way. Our USB 3.0 cable is going to go into this header here. So we'll bring the cable through the cutout, line it up with the header and push into place. And the header just below that is for our front panel type C cable. So again, we'll bring the cable through the cutout, line it up, push into place, and then we'll just pull all the excess cable through to the back. Next thing to do is install our power supply and we've got a non-modular power supply. So all the cables are installed. There is some cables that we're not going to need. It's our SATA and Molex cables. So what I'm going to do is just organize these together with a cable tie. Because our graphics card is a 12 volt high power connector and our power supply only has two 8 pin PCIe cables, we are going to need to use the adapter that came with our graphics card. So I'm just going to plug it in at this stage. So that now means we're going to have a 12 volt high power connector to plug into our graphics card. This is our power supply's intake fan. So we're going to want to install it facing down the way where we can get cooler from underneath the case. We can then secure our power supply into place using four of the large screws from the case accessory bag. Our two 8-pin EPS cables are going to go into these headers at the top left of the motherboard. So we can bring our cables in through the cutout and get them plugged in. And then we can pull all the excess cable through to the back. Our 24-pin cable is going to go into this header here. So we'll go ahead and bring the cable through the cutout, line it up with the header and push into place. And then we'll just pull all the excess cable through to the back. On the side of the case, I'm going to use two of Lee and Lee's Estelle Infinity Uni fans. And these are the reverse blade fans, so the good side of the fan is going to be on display, but still bringing fresh air into our CPU cooler and our graphics card. So all we're going to want to do is line the fans up and push down to join them together. We're not going to need the additional connectors on this end, so I'm going to remove them. We just need to turn them around 90 degrees, and then they're going to be able to pull out. And then on the other end, we can install our fan cable. So there's a few different cables you can get for these. In the triple pack of fans, you'll get a cable that plugs into a fan hub. I've just used the cable that comes with the individual fans and we've got a PWM cable and an ARGB cable and this is gonna simplify the installation. So we can just pass the cables coming from our fans through the cutout at the bottom and then we'll set the fans up into place on the side of the case. And we can screw the fans into place at the back with the screws that came with the fans. We've got another system fan header around the bottom of the motherboard, so we'll plug the PWM cable coming from our fans into that. And we've got two ARGB headers at the top of the motherboard. So we can bring our ARGB cable through and we'll get it plugged into one of those. We're now ready to install our graphics card and to get access to our slots, we're going to need to loosen the sun screw and it's going to open up this bracket. Now for our graphics card, we're going to want to remove the second and third slot cover from the top. And these are actually breakaway slot covers. So what we're going to do is push the slot cover down and then if we just wiggle it up and down it's going to break off and we'll do the same thing with the third one down we can then open the clip on the top pcie slot on the motherboard and we can then line our graphics card up with the slot and once we're happy our graphics card is lined up it's just some firm pressure and it is going to clip into place and then we can secure it at the side with two of the power supply screws 
We can then plug the power cable into our graphics card and then we'll put all the excess cable through to the back. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management to get the panels back on again. So that's the build complete. If you don't know how to install Windows or set the PC up, I've made another video that covers all of that, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. What I'm going to do now is some thermal testing, and then I'm going to be back with the case review. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.